Hi, in this third installment or series on experimental test plans for material calibration, I will focus on thermosets. So thermosets are these materials, it could be an epoxy, it could be a pressure sensitive adhesive. It's sticky material that's used to bond different uh, parts together. And today I will answer the question, what experiments you should perform if you want to calibrate a continuum level material for a thermoset. That is, you want to create a finite element model in which you represent your uh, adhesive using a uh, continuum type element. It could be shell elements, it could be uh, 2D elements, 3D elements, but it's not the case where you have cohesive elements or cohesive surfaces. That requires different testing. It's not part of the discussion today. But if you want to use a continuum level element, I have divided the test plan into three cases that I think are most relevant here. And the three cases are dynamic predictions. In some applications, you're mainly interested in the frequency response of the adhesive. In that case, I have a test plan for you. If you're mainly interested in slow monotonic loading uh, of a material up to failure, perhaps, uh, on the continuum level, you can make some simplifications to the test plan. And that allows you to come up with a continuum level material model very quickly. Or you can do the general loading situation uh, time domain analysis mainly, large strains if you can reach it, uh, but to failure as well. And um, let's talk about these in orders. Let's talk about the dynamic predictions first. This is something you would do on a dynamic mechanical anal analysis DMA test machine. I recommend you start doing a amplitude sweep at constant frequency. That allows you to determine in what range your uh, thermoset is linear viscoelastic because you want to stick in the linear viscoelastic domain when you do these tests because that's the material model that we will extract in the end. So once you determine that from a sweep of amplitude, you can switch over to do a frequency sweep. In this test, you will measure the storage modules, the loss modules, which then will be used in the data extraction in the end. If needed, you can repeat this at different temperatures. And if you do that, you can come up with a time temperature superposition type model using WLF or Arrhenius type uh, scaling of time versus temperature. And the quick fix for the monotonic loading is written here. All you need to do is a uniaxial tension test. I would do it to failure. I would repeat it two, three times to measure the variability. And then I would do this on a simple dog bone shaped specimen if you can make one of those uh, I would use the best I can, depending on how hard it is to generate the specimens. Uh, if you do these tests, the best you can use with this data is a rate-independent plasticity model, but you can activate damage initiation and evolution from the data that you record. So that is uh, sometimes useful. The most general case uh, for a continuum model is the approach that I outlined here. I would do a cyclic tension test. I would load to a small strain a fraction of a percent, I would hold it a little bit, because adhesives and these thermosets also relax uh, when given a chance. They are viscoplastic in the response, not nonlinear elastic. I would then unload to a low force and then reload to a larger strain. Now keep doing that kind of cycle two, three times, uh, either to failure or you can unload to zero if you're interested in uh, more the, the residual strain predictions. You obviously should repeat these tests two, three times to determine how repeatable the tests are. And um, as before, I would recommend using dog bone shaped specimens if you can. And uh, once you do all these tests, you have enough information to calibrate a nonlinear viscoplastic material model for your thermal set, which can be very useful for predicting both the, uh, the time dependence, the unloading dependence, the strain effects, and all of these things that can happen in thermosets. Um, repeat the testing at multiple temperatures if you are interested in that. And uh, remember, at the end of all this testing, you can use the M calibration software from our company to calibrate a material model very quickly to the experimental data. If you have any questions, you can ask them below.